So-called proton-mediated nucleophilic substitution reactions involve the use of a strong acid to activate a leaving group. Protonation tends to turn groups that would not ordinarily be good leaving groups, such as the hydroxyl group, into groups that are good leaving groups, such as water. If we think about the conjugate acids of the leaving groups in each case, H2O in the left-hand case and H3O plus in the right-hand case, it becomes clear why protonation improves the quality of a leaving group. A protonated species is more acidic than one that is not protonated due to the addition of positive charge. For the same reason, a protonated molecule is more Lewis acidic than its neutral counterpart, and we can exploit this phenomenon to encourage certain types of nucleophilic substitution reactions. Proton-mediated nucleophilic substitutions typically involve the protonation of an oxygen atom that's part of an ether or a hydroxyl group. This converts what would be a poor leaving group, OR-, into a good leaving group, the neutral fragment HOR, alcohol or water. So whereas neutral ethers and alcohols tend not to participate in nucleophilic substitution reactions, protonated versions do. And the key is the conversion of the relatively poor Lewis acid, ROH, into the good Lewis acid, ROH2+. Common acids used to do this include things like HCl, HBr, or sulfuric acid, H2SO4. The use of a strong acid ensures that the alcohol is converted completely to its conjugate acid. Before we look at a couple of examples, an important point to make here is that protonation can lead to either SN1 or SN2. What protonation does is just convert a poor leaving group into a good leaving group. And so either of these mechanisms can occur following the installation of a good leaving group in the alcohol or ether substrate. Take a look at these reaction conditions. H2SO4 is written over the arrow, and this is sulfuric acid, clearly the most reactive species within these, these reaction conditions. Sulfuric acid is a Bronsted acid, and so we should be looking for a basic group within the organic substrate. The most basic atom in this molecule is pretty clearly the oxygen. Proton transfer from sulfuric acid to that oxygen leads to a protonated intermediate containing a good leaving group. And here, because the electrophilic carbon is tertiary and the nucleophile, HOCH3, is weak, it's neutral, we should expect a D sub n step to occur first in an SN1 type reaction, leading to tert butyl cation, a key carbocationic intermediate. Notice here that water is an important byproduct of this step. Association of the nucleophile, methanol, to this cation leads after proton transfer to a neutral ether product. One side of the ether is the tert butyl group, which came from the tert butyl cation, and the other side is the CH3 group, which rode along with the nucleophilic oxygen throughout the mechanism. The overall process here is SN1, owing again to the heavily substituted electrophilic carbon and the neutral nucleophile used. And the key point is that the strong acid converts a poor leaving group, hydroxide, into a good leaving group, water. This kind of reactivity isn't just restricted to SN1 reactions, however. Under these reaction conditions, we're using the strong acid HCl. Hydrochloric acid is a Bronsted acid, unsurprisingly, and that means that we should consider the organic substrate as a base. There's no clear nucleophile here as there was in the top case where we used methanol as solvent, but we'll see a nucleophile emerge as the mechanism proceeds. Another great example of why using mechanistic reasoning is helpful for product prediction. Here again, the most basic atom is going to be the oxygen, and protonation of that oxygen generates an intermediate containing a good leaving group, water. Dissociation of water right away would lead to a primary carbocation, which is too unstable to form under laboratory reaction conditions. What can happen at this point? Well, keep in mind that after this proton transfer, the conjugate base of the acid used is hanging around as well. At this point, that conjugate base especially one that's a decent nucleophile like chloride, can engage in an SN2 process that results in substitution of water for the conjugate base of the strong acid used, in this case, chloride. Once again, water is a byproduct. And the mechanism here hinges on an SN2 step rather than an SN1 process because of the primary nature of the electrophile. One thing you may wonder about is the sulfate anion, or more correctly, the bisulfate anion, HSO4- in the top case. Why doesn't this coordinate to the carbocation rather than the neutral molecule, methanol? 
it seems like sulfate ought to be a better nucleophile than methanol due to its negative charge. In fact, because of the massive resonance stabilization enjoyed by this anion, it's non-nucleophilic. And this is important to keep in mind for sulfuric acid and most of the strong acids that are not the hydrohalic acids. Their conjugate bases are poor nucleophiles. This is actually a nice synthetic advantage because we don't have to worry about the conjugate base of the acid getting involved in the mechanism, and we can treat with a separate nucleophile and rest assured that that nucleophile is going to coordinate to the carbocation in preference to the conjugate base of the strong acid used. As we can see in the bottom case, when we use a hydrohalic acid, HCl or HBr or even HI, there's the possibility of the conjugate base of that acid coordinating to the electrophilic carbon. 